Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology with your favorite neuropathologist, Andrea Gilbert. There's an exciting new adventure in the world of neuropathology with the publication of the fifth edition of the WHO classification of tumors of the central nervous system. In this new edition, there are a ton of new and exciting changes, including changes to criteria for old tumors and also brand new tumors that reflect our blossoming knowledge that we have of the molecular underpinnings of these different tumors. So join me on this next adventure in this video and in the next series of videos as we go over the different changes that we're seeing in the fifth edition of the WHO classification of tumors of the central nervous system. So in the next video, we're gonna be talking about a 58-year-old man who presented with new onset seizure activity. On MRI studies, an ill-defined mass was found on the parieto-occipital region, and on T1 post-contrast, there was no enhancement. The surgeons did a biopsy. Let's see what it looks like under the microscope. So the lesion here was biopsied, and what we can see is there's this diffusely infiltrative astrocytic lesion. So uh, this is kind of a low power view of what we're seeing. Higher power view shows these atypical astrocytes that are diffusely infiltrating through the brain tissue. Um, and then there's also some mitotic figures here. So uh, in the workup that we do for, uh, for this case, we did an IDH stain, which uh, here's the control. So this is the positive control and the IDH is negative. So this is a, um, uh, we can assume that this is an IDH wild type tumor. Other findings, ATRX is retained, so that's a normal result. P53 has a normal pattern where you just have a few little punctate cells. And then the KI67 is a little bit elevated. So when I go over uh, grading of diffusely infiltrative astrocytic le lesions with my residents, what, we, uh, what I give them is this mnemonic, uh, AMEN. Um, and so when you have a situation of a uh, diffusely infiltrative astrocytoma in an adult, you can use this uh, abbreviation or, th or this mnemonic. Um, if that tumor has atypia and hypercellularity, then we can call that a grade two diffuse astrocytoma, um, if that's all that it has. If in addition, it also has mitoses, then we can call that a grade three anaplastic astrocytoma. And then in addition, if it also has either endothelial cell hyperplasia and or necrosis, then we can call that a grade four glioblastoma. So for this patient, uh, when uh, grading for this patient, uh, we've got an adult with a diffusely infiltrative, astro, uh, diffusely infiltrative astrocytoma. So uh, we can use this mnemonic AMEN to determine the, um, the diagnosis. And so for this patient, we've got, sorry, we've got atypia and hypercellularity, and so it's at least a grade two. We've got mitosis, so it's at least a grade three, but we do not have the endothelial cell hypertrophy, hyperplasia, or necrosis. So a classically, we would have called this a grade three anaplastic astrocytoma just based off of the histologic findings. But, um, Occasionally, we will come across the scenario where on the biopsy of the tissue that is, that is given to me, uh, the tissue does not have the criteria, does not meet the criteria for a grade four designation. But let's say, hypothetically, that the tumor looks like this. Now, this is not our patient, but I'm giving you this kind of over-the-top exam uh, example of that um, uh, occasionally we come across the scenario where the anaplastic astrocytoma is what we see on biopsy, but the imaging diagnosis is very, very suggestive of glioblastoma. So, um, so uh, situations where this may arise, maybe the surgeon takes it just on the, on the edge of the lesion, not the center of the lesion, and say they run into uh, significant bleeding and have to abort the case, and so all we have is what's on the edge of the lesion, and, and it might not be representative. So we run in the, into this situation uh, occasionally where the, where the biopsy shows a lower grade, but the imaging is very suggestive of a higher grade. And how do we approach that? Well, some people might say, 
Uh, some pathologists might say, well, I'm just going to call what I see on the slide and call it anaplastic astrocytoma. You can do that. It's not very helpful for the patient, though, because it's, it's not representing what's actually going on in the patient. What I used to do was say it's a minimum grade anaplastic astrocytoma is the minimum, and then the comments say that you know the imaging is very suggestive of grade four. There might be a sampling bias, a sampling error, um, uh, and a and a higher grade lesion can't be ruled out. So in order to um, to address this issue where sometimes there's a discordance between the histopathologic diagnosis and the imaging diagnosis. There, uh, uh, C-IMPACT um, is a group that, um, that informs our WHO uh, classification of tumors. And so of their seven uh, recommendations since the last uh, 2016 recommendation, um, 2016 WHO classification of tumors. In the new fifth edition, they have recommended putting, um, uh, 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 changing the classification such that those tumors that appear lower grade on histology, uh, if they uh, show demonstration of these classic characteristic molecular alterations that we commonly see in these really ugly tumors, that we classically associate with glioblastoma, then we can go ahead and call it diffuse astrocytic glioma IDH wild type with molecular features of glioblastoma WHO grade 4, which admittedly is a mouthful. However, it gets the word glioblastoma into the diagnostic line. So that if we go back here, this patient, um, if you put the word glioblastoma in the diagnostic line, then that patient will be accepted into clinical trials that are focused on glioblastoma. Uh, and without having that word glioblastoma in the clinical, um, on the final diagnosis line, the clinical trials uh, won't accept him for um, for the study. So just to recap, if the, uh, if the uh, diffusely infiltrative astrocytoma that's in an adult and IDH wild type, if it also shows these other alterations, then we can go ahead and we can call it this diffuse astrocytic glioma IDH wild type with molecular features of glioblastoma um, in order to get that glioblastoma on the diagnostic line. In addition, this uh, C-IMPACT now also noted that a homozygous CD4K into a deletion um, uh, it can also very commonly be seen in these IDH wild type glioblastomas, but they can also be seen in other things as well, so it's not incorporated into the definition. So this is uh, straight off, hot off the press from the fifth edition of the WHO, um, basically saying that for our diagnosis of glioblastoma IDH wild type, if it shows histologic features of uh, grade four, which is the endothelial cell hypertrophy, microvascular proliferation, and or necrosis, then we can call it grade four. But in addition, if it also shows any one of these uh, uh, alterations, then we can also call it a grade four, even if the histology shows a lower grade. Okay, so if we go back to our patient, we come back to this slide, we determine that by histopathology only, just by looking at the slide, we would call this an anaplastic astrocytoma, which is a grade three. However, let's look at the molecular alterations for this patient. So here are the results for, from his uh, chromosomal microarray. The area of the genome that harbors the EGFR gene is amplified. So we have an EGFR amplification. In addition to that, we have gains of seven. So let's just call it for this argument, gain of chromosome seven. It's just kind of partial, but um, for this argument, we'll just call it chromosome seven gain. And then in addition to that, we've got a loss of a, a, a whole a chromosome 10, so we've got a monosomy 10. And then in addition to that, we've got homozygous deletion of the areas of the genome that contain CDK in 2A and B. So the overall results uh, for this patient on this test uh, shows uh, uh, two of the three major alterations that we can use to call it a grade four. 
In addition, it also has a TERP promoter mutation uh, uh, that was detected on a separate analysis. And so, um, so if we go back to this uh, stage here, uh, instead of calling it anaplastic astrocytoma, we can take these histologic features and blend them with the uh, molecular features to make an integrated histomorphologic diagnosis. <clears throat> So for the final diagnosis, what is the final diagnosis? Well, if we're going by the histologic classification by itself, then we would call this an anaplastic astrocytoma grade three. Not recommended. Um, if we go by what the recommended C-impact classification was since the, the fourth edition of the WHO, um, then we would call this diffuse astrocytic glioma IDH wild type with molecular features of glioblastoma. Uh, which is a mouthful, um, and the, in the fifth edition, and so we don't want to use that, in the fifth edition it just says instead of calling it molecular features of glioblastoma, these things they are going to act like a glioblastoma, so let's just call them a glioblastoma. So the final diagnosis here is a glioblastoma IDH wild type, even though on histology it looked like um, anaplastic astrocytoma, we can move it to a glioblastoma based on its more uh, molecular features because that's the way that it's going to act and that's the way that it should be treated. Alright, so that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you like this video and you feel like you learned something, please feel free to subscribe. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and also on our website, Adventures in Neuropathology. Be sure to check out our new videos coming out very soon regarding the new changes of the WHO 5th edition of classification of tumors of the central nervous system. See you on our next adventure. Bye.